This is the T90M autoloader that sits just below the commander. It stores the propellant and the shells on top of each other, which rotates and stops at a desired tank round, and elevates to a suitable height required for cassette hoist to fire when ready. It can be controlled through the gunner's fire and control system, which we will be explaining in step-by-step -step format to help you understand it better. After verifying the target from the thermal imagers, he fires the tank using the right trigger and open fire, this 125mm gun. And more importantly, we have to learn how to drive this tank in case an opportunity comes along. So stay tuned and don't miss a beat. The T-90 tank has a length of 6.8 meters or 22.3 feet measuring only the hull. It has a width of 3.78 meters or 12.4 feet, while it has a height of just 2.3 meters or 7.5 feet. Comparing this to an average person will help you understand it better or even more interesting. Let's compare this to the world's tallest human at 8 feet 3 inches. As you can see, it looks very small. This is the T-14 Armada tank. As you can see, it's much bigger and larger. Just besides the T-90 tank is the British Challenger II, the Americans' Abrams tank, and the Leopard II A-6 tank. Soviet tank philosophy is to have lighter and lower profile tanks, the reason why it weighs around 48 tons or 52 US tons. Let's start from the front. It has an improved main gun, a 125mm smoothbore gun. Interestingly, it's the same gun being fitted on the T-14 Armada. Just beside it is the 7.5mm machine gun that could be fired by the gunner using fire control systems. This is an infrared warning receiver placed here that activates these smoke grenade launchers when an infrared homing device is launched against the tank. Interestingly, this older red eye is absent on this T90M. The middle object is the measuring unit of the barrel straightness monitor. These are the backup sites for both the gunners and the commanders, which could be opened from inside the tank. This is the Sosna gunner's primary site with multi-channel capability. Just behind the gunner site is a 360 degree camera, also elevated above the tank. This antenna is supposedly a military grade Wi-Fi receiver. Here is the commander 360 degree panoramic site just above the sights is the 12.7 cord machine gun. Let's move inside the tank. Here is the commander section and it is being equipped with eight observation slits. This is the site control board. Above it is the commander display site and just besides it is the navigation and battle management unit. This is the camera control board. As stated, it also has a backup site, and these are the control sites associated with it. This is the commander joystick, and the commander can look through this display sites to operate and search for targets. When ready, the commander opens fires the 12.7 cord machine gun. Moving to the side is the gunner section. This is the gunner's video mode or thermal imagery. Just below it is the gunner's control site, combined with a parallel site control panel. Moving to the right is the panel of the fire control system and automatic loader. And the last and most important part is the gunner's joystick. Let's look in more detail at how it works. This is the laser range finder located on the right side of the joystick, and on the left is the reset button for the laser range finder. Behind the joystick is the right trigger, responsible for firing the main 125mm gun, while the left side trigger is responsible for firing the coaxial machine gun. Let's see how this works. Step number one, turn on the fire control system. Step number two, turn on thermal imagers. Step number three, gunners load desired rounds using the autoloader function. Step number four. He finds the target using the laser range finder and moves the turret by tilting the joystick sideways to rotate the turret left or right, as shown here in the animation. He moves the turret up and down by tilting the joystick vertically. This is the result when viewed from outside the tank. Step number five. 
After verifying the target from the thermal imagers, he fires the tank using the right trigger, and booms open fire this 125mm gun. Step number 6. If he wants to fire the coaxial gun, he presses the left trigger. Open fires this machine gun located at the front of the turret. Let us look at the driver section of this tank. This is the driver's seat. Here is the driver's periscope, and this is what he sees when driving. And these are all the controls that the driver will operate while driving. For now, we will only analyze how the tank is driven. One interesting fact about this tank is it was supposed to have steering mounted control to maneuver the tank. But due to the overhead cost, they are still using these steering tillers that are used to turn the tank. Besides it is the gear selector coupled to a manual or automatic transmission, depending on the versions ordered by the military. The manual version has seven forward and one reverse gear. Moving ahead is the accelerator and the brake which are similar to a car. In order to move the tank, the driver uses the accelerator pedal. To stop or slow down the tank, the driver uses the brake pedal and the clutch to change gears if it's a manual transmission. Now comes the interesting part, the levers or steering tillers. Using these will turn the tank left or right. To turn the tank to the left, the driver pulls up the left tiller. This disengages the clutch on the left track, causing it to slow down, while the right track is moving at a constant speed. This change in the track speed causes the tank to turn left. The same thing applies when turning the tank to the right, the driver pulls up the right tiller. This disengages the clutch on the right track, causing the track to slow down while the left track maintains a constant speed, thus turning the tank to the right. Hope this basic explanation helps you drive the Russian T-90 tank as shown in the animations. Just below the commander is the famous autoloader, and this is how it works. This is a bit fast, so let's slow this down a bit and dive into its basic parts. Starting from the base, this is the carousel. Above the carousel is the projectile or tank shell. Close to it is the propellant, which is required to fire the tank. Just like the British Challenger tank requires a projectile and a propellant to complete the whole process of firing the rifle gun. Above it is the ammunition cassettes. That is the base for both the gunner and commander. This is the cassette hoist. When ordered by the commander, it rotates and stops at a desired tank shells and elevate to a suitable height required for cassette hoist. Moving ahead is the stub ejector. All set and done, the gunner presses the trigger and fires the gun. It then ejects the empty shell as shown in the animation here. Now let's look from a different angle, the workings of the T90M autoloader in simple basic animation. The ammunition storage is also a new armored bustle, with blowout panels, has been added to the rear of the turret for storing ammunition. The autoloader's armor has also been increased to eliminate the problem of ammunition cook-off. This is associated with old T-90 or T-72 tanks autoloader designs, which explodes as shown when hit with a tank shell. The T-90M is powered by a modernized V-12 turbocharged and water-cooled engine that churns out 1,130 horsepower. It weighs around 1 US ton and has a power to weight ratio of 18.2 to 1. It can reach a top speed of about 37 miles per hour or 60 km per hour. The operational range of this tank is around 340 miles or 550 kilometers. The range is extended with additional fuel drums attached at the rear of the tank. The fumes from the engine is extracted from this exhaust situated on the left side of the tank. Let's look at the diesel generator. This tank is equipped with main power plant and an auxiliary diesel generator that provides electric power supply to different electrical components while the tank is at halt. This reduces fuel consumption, extends the life of the engine, and also reduces tank thermal signature. This is the Reclit Explosive Reactive Armor, a third generation heavy ERA. This animation shows the detachable modules to protect the tank from enemy projectiles. 
Even the hull has a detachable Reclid explosive reactive armor, which allows the T-90M to resist modern projectiles like the tow missiles. Interestingly for the back, they have these welded structure to protect the power pack compartments, as well as the turret rear from anti-tank grenades. In our recent animations, the Challenger 2 has this Iron Fist APS. The Abrams and Merkava are supposed to be upgraded with the trophy system, while Russian T-90M also have its own proposed APS. These are the infrared detectors that can fire both hard kill counter and soft kill like these smoke grenades while these rectangular boxes house the active protection system. This is how it works. Step 1. The sensor detects the rockets or missile. Step 2. The Russian active protection system activates and fires a projectile that explodes with the jet metals or slugs. Step 3. When the rocket or missile reached the tank, it gets destroyed by the large amount of projectiles, keeping the tank crew safe. Step 4. The commander can also switch to soft kill countermeasures when the sensors detect a laser homing missiles. The smoke grenade launchers automatically detects and fires. This creates a smoke screen blinding the infrared homing missiles and then rendering it obsolete. Let's look at the pros and cons of this tank. Mobility. As a main battle tank, it is very light compared to the Abrams or Challenger 2 tanks which is suitable for urban or almost all-terrain warfare. Auto loaders. The advantages of adding auto loaders are often implemented in an attempt to reduce tank size and profiles following Soviet-era tank strategy. The blow-off panel. This was also a major upgrade compared to older T-90, which many have seen it cook off after a single shot. Let's take a look at the cons. Crew capacity. Like the original T-90, the T-90M has a crew of three, with the commander serving as a loader as well. This can increase the workload on the crew and potentially impact the tank's efficiency in combat. The reverse speed or gear is still very slow as compared to other Western tanks. It's also vulnerable to most top attack missile like the Javelin, similar with other Western tanks due to the changing modern battlefield environment. We make original 3D animation from scratch with two people working on it full time. So please support us by subscribing to help us produce more videos, just like our recent content, the Abrams Tank and the United Kingdom Challenger 2 Tank.